Hey everyone, Mark from Coast of the Country. Today's video, we're gonna get these old bungs ripped out, put some brand new ones in, tidy up some of the wiring, hopefully, like we'll wire in that control panel, um, tidy up a few jobs, and hopefully that will be nearly it. Like, well, that's pretty much most of the job's done. And it should be pretty much watertight after that. So, um, all right, let's make it happen. All right, so I forgot to film that bit. Um, yeah, so basically drilled out the old bungs, uh, put new ones in, sickle flexed them in, sealed them up and they're all good to go so then after that we've just been going around with silicon sikaflex um putting a few dobs here and there to hold this conduit in place and tidying up a few things all right so it's time to start doing some wiring for this control panel so we've got all our um circuits here for all the varying things for the boat um, and now we've got our control panel here which is just a matter of wiring that up so it's basically got a main feed which comes in here which runs the whole powers up the whole panel and then every circuit off that it's got its own little fuse to a switch so all we got to do is um connect all that up so what i've done is i've got a i won't bore you too much with that we've got a main feed coming in from the isolator switch like a very big heavy cable to these two here they were really short um i didn't have enough cable at the time so it was a bit tricky to join. So this one's the positive feed coming in from the battery basically. And that runs the main feed into this um, switch panel. And then I've got a the earth, well the negative coming from the battery runs to runs to here. And we've joined, we've soldered all of our earth connections onto, onto this and insulated it quite a bit. It's so basically like a little buzz bar, just a common place to anchor all your earths. You can use terminal blocks with screws, but they get corrosion in them after a while and then you start having problems. So I've just soldered everything, taped them all up. Uh, we've got a white wire in with the black, which was a, which was that trailer plug um, cable, which we used for the bilge pump. So that's the earth wire there, negative one. Um, and then the rest of these have just got their own um, feed basically off to each circuit. So um, they're individually fused, uh, not the 100% best quality switch panel but it'll do the job and they're quite easily to change to different panels or switches later if it doesn't last but so we've got to fit all that in there yet um so pretty much we've got it wired for pretty sure it was navigation lights anchor light no it wasn't spotlight navigation light stern light courtesy lights for inside then we've got what was that? That was, oh, bilge pump on manually, bilge pump auto, sounder, and outside lights. So around the outside of the boat, which will shine in the water. So if you're trying to land a fish, it just comes with a um, little 12 volt cigarette socket, voltmeter, and a couple of USB charging ports. So we'll try and squeeze all that in there. And um, yeah, everything's been soldered, insulated, so Hopefully that should last a little while. We'll um, get all that buttoned up and chuck a battery in and hopefully we don't let any smoke out anywhere. So I just put a very light bead of um, Sikaflex around the edge of this uh, panel and we'll let that set for a couple of hours and that'll act like a bit of a waterproof gasket but it still means that we can get it off later if we want to. Okay, well that's pretty much most of it done. We're just going to start um, putting the floor back in mount the glove box and a few things like that and um, get it a bit more tidied up. Right, so here's our glove box. There's a million holes that's been drilled in it before and they've got some humongous screws which are stripped out as well. So I've re-drilled some new holes. Um, I've countersunk them for a smaller screw. So they'll go in there. But what I'm gonna do in the meantime, these old holes, I'll glue them from behind 
and I'll just cover them up like that first. So when I put the glue in, it'll be all nice and smooth at the front, and then we'll just cover up anything that we're not going to use. So we don't need that one. And once this is screwed on, I can still take this tape off from the inside. So there's four holes we'll use. And what I'll do is just glue up the back of these, the ones we're not going to use. Smooth that over in a minute. Okay, so that'll do the trick. Once I push that in, the glue will push out and I'll smooth it out in a sec. Alright, so... So we'll just whack this in now. So that'll fit. I've got the glue behind these um, bits of tape there at the moment oozing out. So when that sets, I'll take the tape off and that'll just make it look a bit neater. So that'll go on there like that. There's our key. Close that key like that. There we go. So that's our key. A couple of drink holders. Okay, got this front bit of floor to pop in. Hopefully that still fits all right. So it goes like that. All right, so we've had this um, Sikaflex on here for a little while now to make a bit of a gasket. It's still a bit sticky, but um, that'll just help seal a bit of moisture out of this at some point if it um, leaks a bit. Have to have a pretty heavy shower of rain to do that though. Just make sure everything fits. I'll lift those cables up a bit because the cigarette lighter plug down the bottom is quite large. So that sort of tends to want to get in the road a bit. And there we go. So let's get these little stainless screws in. So that glue just acts like a bit of a gasket now. That will seal around the top if we get a massive heap of rain or something. Got our fire extinguisher here still charged. That can go in here. So it'll fit like that. And then like that. So that will stay there like that, hopefully. Now, what I've done is I've shoved a multimeter into the Anderson plugs up the front there. So showing zero at the moment. I have no idea if I've chucked them in the right way around, won't matter. Um, so with our switch here now, um, what I've also done, sorry, I'll show you this first. Um, obviously a battery's gonna go in there later. I've got a little test battery here, which is, yeah, 12 volts. I've got the earths going to it and the positive jammed up onto the Anderson plug in that. Bit rough, but um, should work. Okay, so we've got our isolation switch in here. When I flick it to number one, so I've got one, two, and one and two. So when I flick it to one, I'll wire it so that will send power to the Anderson plug, which will be an electric motor one day. So up here I've got 
multimeter jammed in the Emerson plug and I've got 12 volts so that's working good and then when I flick it to 2 that should power the panel here which it does there you go, it's at 12.8 that's weird on the camera this is all going crazy but um, real life it's not so that's our power panel and when I flick it to 1 and 2 that should run both so I should have a voltage there which I do and voltage there so that's good all right also had a spare storage hatch which I bought ages ago just thought I'd put that in quickly um, that's where I'll probably have my phone or a few things like that uh, out of the weather drilled a small hole in the bottom of it just for a drain hole if for some reason it does get water in there um, what else we do also we've just screwed in the last of the floor which is those back pads there. One of them's got a fuel tangle sit on there. I might put a strap on that as well. Um, next job to do is I also put um, just put a few little stickers on the switch panel. So that's all ready to go. Um, I've got to put a battery in it yet. What I'm just doing at the moment is giving this um, anchor well a quick uh, sand. Uh, it's a bit of a weird design this. There's no drains in it so if it gets water in it I don't know where it's supposed to go. There was holes in the corners of MIG welded them up quickly while I was at it because um, it was dripping straight into where you'd have stuff stored like a coat or something if you wanted to keep out of the weather. So what I'm going to do is give it a very light sand in the joints and then I'm going to sicker flex it and then I've ordered some fittings which ha haven't arrived yet. There's a 90 degrees um, skin fitting which I'm going to put here and I'll run a hose out to the side of the hole so if it gets full of water or you get a bit of a wave over the front, fills up or sea spray or whatever, um, that can drain away out, outside the hole instead of down through the middle of the hole and out the back. So anyway, we'll get this sealed up while I've got the sicker flex out. Um, I'll just go around here, clean it up. I'll mask it all up as well and then I'll just put a bead of um, glue around it. All right, so I've just cleaned that up a bit, give it a light sand, used a bit of prep sole to clean it up and then put tape down and just give it a bead of Zikaflex so that'll seal that and then like I said later I'll drill out some skin fittings and put a bung in that. Right so just quickly remove the tape and we'll let that set now. Alright sticker time. So these are our Rego stickers we got made up. Uh, legally you have to have them on your boat. So what I'll do with these is you can see where the old stickers have been for someone else. So what we'll do is I generally like to just get a bit of tape have a bit of a visual look at where you sort of want them to go so I can see that it's the start of the old stickers so they're a bit bigger than the other ones that were on here so I'll stick that like that and I'm just going to keep the stickers lined up with the top of this um, the bottom of this gunnel I should say so somewhere like that looks pretty good. Another bit of tape there. Just find a pencil. So I just have a bit of a quick walk around the boat and you sort of see whether it looks pretty okay to the eye. It's not too bad. So then what I'll do is just get a lead pencil or just something very small. Put a little mark in the corner of the overlay stickers. And then I'll know when I put it back on, I can line it up exactly to that. That's pretty much it. And it's just a matter of taking off the backing part. These were supposed to be dark blue, so I'm not sure what happened there. But anyway, and it's just a matter of laying that on like that, and we just follow the ribs of the boat as we go. Without getting too stressed over it. work out any air bubbles. Now what to do with that thing? 
So all I found was a um, basically it's a spec filler bit of plastic. Do this with a credit card if you want. Might ruin it though, but just anything to um, try and flatten it out, get any air bubbles out. Not sure if I mentioned it, but I'll clean this with prep sole first, make sure the boat was all nice and clean. Right, so once that's done, it's just a matter of grabbing the outer, outer one, pulling it off. They look black to me. They're supposed to be dark blue, but anyway. There we go. I'll just go and do the other side. All right, so put the motor back on quickly. I swapped out this uh, aluminium, uh, that metal tube that they had on there for an aluminium one, put a tiny bit of um, glue under there, Sikaflex, so uh, stop it moving, um, is about four, 10 mil higher than the original. Um, but looking at where the bottom of the hull is compared to the um, cavitation plate, it's going to be pretty close, I think. Um, sometimes the higher the better. I've uh, got the backboards in, as you saw, I'm going to throw the fuel tank in soon. Alrighty, time to put this battery in. Does it fit? Cool. It does fit. Alright, I'll let that sit all the way back like that. I've got a couple of points down each side which I'll put a ratchet strap or something on. And then these terminals here can go straight on there like that. Nice, even got the right size, that's a bonus. So this is a 100 amp per hour battery, I think. So it'll probably be, um, it's probably the minimum amount of, uh, size battery you need for a trolling motor, but um, this was a spare one had at the farm, so I'm not complaining. This will be awesome. Get on there. So we've got nice short lengths of cable going to the um, big Anderson plug anyway, so sweet. All right, I'll get them cranked up a bit and I'll get a strap around there to tie that in there so it can't go anywhere. That'll be good. And that's kept it off the ground and water can flow underneath there, so excellent. Okay, so we've got a um, ratchet strap on there, well, a motorbike strap on there, temporary. So keep that in. Put the hatch back in. That is done. All right, so a bit of a quick lighting test. So we've got our spotty up there, nav lights. Got our anchor light down here. So it's in the down position at the moment. Cabin lights, so we've got a little light underneath that console. Got that one up the front there, that should light up the casting deck. And I stuck one at the back here as well, mainly for when you're stepping into the boat. That'll give us a bit of a bit a little bit of light. Uh, what have we got? Bilge pump, auto bilge pump, sounder, and underwater lights, which are basically these lights on the side. So we've got a couple of those on each side, so they'll be good for landing fish, hopefully. Got our strap put in over the 
fuel tank. I was going to put it on the other side to try and balance up the weight a bit because obviously I'm driving on that side if I'm on my own and I thought I'd try and balance it up with the fuel tank on the other side but then the problem is when you're stepping in from guarding or beach launching especially it's good to be able to step on the back step and straight into a nice clear spot to step onto instead of tripping over fuel tanks and things um, and I figure by the time I get um, you know someone else in the boat definitely will help and if for some reason I do get this motor well that'll be up the front on the left hand side anyway so that might balance it up a bit so really I've just got to throw a bit of safety gear in it and pretty much um, wire up the trailer so it's legal and we're ready to go. So it should be good. But so the only thing I'm not a huge fan of is pretty much this little voltmeter. I mean it's a bit gimmicky but I don't, know, I don't think it'll draw much current but if I do leave this on uh, standby overnight down the shack or something like that if I'm not there and it springs a leak not that it should it shouldn't pull too much current but it'll be using a little bit so anyway I've got the isolator there so that will kill that the only other job I've got to do is pretty much uh, wire up the trailer lights um, I've got all the lights for it I just got to run the cables and that is it and then we can give it a quick test run um, and I'll measure up the front of the boat off the water to find out what size um, shaft I need for an electric motor if I get one. So um, other than that, that's about it. So probably leave it there for this one. Thanks for watching guys. Um, again, hit the like button if you could and um, subscribe if you haven't already, that'd be awesome. I'll see you on the next one.